Hi, boys and girls. I can't wait to share with you what I have learned about caterpillars. Now, I've been watching caterpillars for a long time, and the weirdest caterpillar I've ever seen in my life was a hickory horned devil. The first time I ran across one of these, some students, first grade students who went on a field trip brought it back from an apple orchard, and it was about the size of a hot dog, and everybody in the school was scared of it. And I, so I looked it up and I found out that it's not really poisonous at all and you can even hold it. So I held it and the kids were screaming and they just went mad. But these hickory horned devils stay underground for about a year and a half before they come out as just a regular brown large amount moth. Monarchs. They have a really, really cool larval stage. So they come out of the egg after about three to five days, and you can tell the egg is ready to hatch because it'll have a black spot at the top. And that black stop spot is simply the ocelli, or their 12 eyes, that are huge, they're massive, they're like half the size of the caterpillar. They don't really do much, they can't see like you and I do. Caterpillars have four tentacles, two on the front, and two on the back. And their tentacles are used for feeling and smelling. Now the tentacles in the front of their body is much larger than the tentacles in the back. And caterpillars have five plus three, which is eight segments on their abdomen. And then they have three segments on the front of their body in their thorax. Now out of the three th thorax, thorax segments come the six legs because caterpillars are insects they have to have six legs so that those six legs come out of the first three segments and then the ten pro legs five on each side of their body come out of the next five segments and then there's three segments beyond that and the pro legs come out of their abdomen so the pro legs are just soft squishy appendages that help them stick to things and kind of allow the caterpillar to climb up and down twigs and trees and buildings or whatever, wherever it wants to go. But the thorax legs help it to hold on to leaves and little bits of food. Now caterpillars have something called a cuticle. The cuticle is the outside of their body and it's kind of like a, a skin, um, skin sort of outside of their body but it's it's called cuticle because it's a little harder than skin and it's their exoskeleton they don't have bones in their body like you and i do they're kind of soft and squishy and it's easy to to squish a caterpillar so please don't pick up a caterpillar if you brought one home from my class and but their cuticle is probably the hardest part of their bodies and their cuticle cells don't grow so when the caterpillar eats and eats and eats, which it does from for two to two weeks to a month, um, it has to grow. So what happens is those cuticle cells break off and a new cuticle forms underneath that. Now right before they're getting ready to shed that cuticle and get another one, they take a deep breath, but they don't breathe through their mouth. They breathe through their spiracles, which are little holes on the sides of their segments. And they pull in lots of air and oxygen, and that helps their cuticle to split off. Uh, so their cuticle is usually, in the monarchs anyway, it's bright and poisonous. It's yellow, black, and white. This alerts predators to stay away because they're poisonous. Now, caterpillars go through five instars. And an instar is simply when the caterpillar has grown to such a size that it can't fit inside that cuticle any longer. And so it sheds that cuticle and that's called an instar. The last and final of the five instars is when the monarch becomes a chrysalis. So uh, they do swallow that air. Now, uh, monarchs have some really weird mouth parts. They have two mandibles that chew the leaves of the, the milkweed that they're eating. But they also have something called a maxillae, and it's underneath their mandible, and it's what they use to take that chewed up bits of food and chew it up smaller and stick it in their mouth. So they use mandibles and maxillae to eat. And 
Uh, caterpillars are just nothing more than little eating machines. The only time they stop eating is when they're shedding or going through the instar. But other than that, they just eat like crazy. So they also have a very limited diet. Uh, for some reason, we don't really understand everything about nature. The female monarch butterfly will lay its eggs only on milkweed. That is the only food that monarchs eat is milkweed. So the females will sip nectar from any kind of flower at all. But when she, the mother has to lay the eggs, she will do it only on milkweed. And that's why I encourage my students to plant milkweed as much as they possibly can, because it's a big help to the monarchs. Um, now, boys and girls, guess what's inside the body of a caterpillar? Not much. Just that they're very soupy and slurpy in there, and all they really are composed of is intestines and a little teeny tiny brain. They don't have much in their body, a lot of intestines, because all they do is eat. And so they have to digest all those leaves that they eat. Now the milkweed plant is poisonous, so to humans and animals and, and other things, but it's not poisonous to the monarch caterpillar. So <clears throat> the neat thing about them is they can eat as much milkweed as they want, but they're very toxic to predators like birds. I've seen videos of birds throwing up after eating a caterpillar or an adult butterfly of the monarch variety. So they're very interesting little creatures. Now, caterpillars are born with a certain number of cells, and those cells will get larger, but they never multiply and get more cells. But they do have some cells in their body that are called imaginal discs, and those discs are what is going to transform into the adult butterfly someday. But mainly, the cells just get bigger and bigger as they grow. Now, caterpillars are prey for a lot of animals, but they do have a few things that help them to protect themselves. One being is the monarchs are, are poisonous, right, to birds and mammals, but they also have camouflage. There's lots of caterpillars that have fake eyes, and they're kind of big, and that makes a bird think, oh, there's a snake, I'm staying away from that. So they can be poisonous, they can have fake eyes that make them look like they're a snake. They can have camouflage where they just completely blend in with the surroundings so you can't even see them. They're very easy to hide because they're so small. And they all, some of them have something called an osmetarium. And they're like two little antlers that come out of their head when they're, um, when they're upset because something's going after them, they'll stick out these two little yellow like horns and a poof of something really stinky will come out. And that scares the predators away. But monarchs don't have that, but some caterpillars do. Now, I bet you we're just sleeping and sleepless at night wondering the answer to this question. And that is, how do caterpillars move? Well, they actually squirm and ripple from their back end to their front. So their back end will contract, and that kind of causes all the segments to go back and forth and back and forth, and it causes them to move forward in a direction that they want to go. So they have a rippling and a contracting sort of way of moving, where they take their segments and they move them back and forth with their muscles. They also breathe through spiracles. Spiracles are little holes in the sides of their segments. And I think I have some pictures of spiracles I'll show you that are very, very fascinating. They do not breathe through their mouth like you and I do. They breathe through spiracles that contract and, and get larger so the oxygen goes in and out. Caterpillars also have something called seti which are just tiny little hair on the sides of their body. And the hairs pick up movement or location, and they send that information back to the brain of the caterpillar. And the brain is not large, let me tell you. They also have something called a spinneret, which is a tube 
under their lower lip. And out of the spinneret will come a liquidy, stringy substance like saliva. And when it dries, it looks like silk from a, from a spider, like spider silk. Well, they use this silky substance that comes out of their spinneret uh, to create a, an attachment when they're ready to turn into a chrysalis. They'll attach to something by oozing all this milky kind of gooey substance from their salivary gland or their spinneret. Now most caterpillars live for two weeks. They can live up to a month if the conditions are right, like if there's a lot of rain or if it's chilly and they don't eat as much. But generally monarchs live for about two, two weeks to a month at the most. And pretty much all they do is eat, eat, eat while they're in this stage. And while they're eating, they will take breaks five times when they're going through an instar when they can't eat because they're splitting their skin off. So I hope you learned some interesting things about the antenna, about their six eyes, their six let or sorry, 12 eyes, six on each side, about their six legs and their 10 pro legs, their four antenna, which is kind of unusual, and how they walk through a rippling and contracting effect and just all the different things about the caterpillar that are fascinating, boys and girls. I hope after watching this, you get so excited about caterpillars that you want to run outside and find some for yourself. I think they're really cool. And I especially like the monarch caterpillars because they're the coolest of all. So that's all, boys and girls, I'm going to share with you now about uh, the caterpillars. So make sure you watch this video once or twice so that you learn everything I told you. And I'll ask some, you some questions in the next video. <laughs> all right. See you next time. Bye. Back up. Oh, he's beautiful.